The first point I want to make about this, it's a very important point, and we need to remember this regularly, is that when you sin, no matter what the sin, when you sin against God, there's always going to be consequences that affect other people. You know, even when you think that this sin is it only has to do with me, I'm only doing this, you're going to bring bad consequences, unintended consequences against other people that you never would have thought were going to happen. This example, Aiken, what does he do? He ends up taking, and we'll get to this in a little bit later, we'll see the exact thing. He takes a garment, he takes some silver, he takes some gold, and he's probably thinking in his mind, well, what's the big deal? I mean, everything's being destroyed anyways. This doesn't hurt anyone else. I'm just going to take this, I'm going to put it in my tent, I want this stuff for me. Right? For me. This is just for me. No one else is involved. Were all the children of Israel not had knowledge of this and knew what he was doing? No, he hid it in his tent. They didn't know that he had done that. But, but who was the Lord God angry with? Look at verse number one again. It says, well, it says in the first few words, but the children of Israel committed a trespass. And then it says that Achan is the one that sinned. But then it says, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. One man, the result of one man's sin is bringing anger and wrath against the whole group. Remember that the next time that you think, oh, I'm just going to do this one thing. Oh, I'm just going to set my eyes and covet this one thing. I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do that. It's private. No one else has to know. I'm going to steal this thing. You're going to bring consequences down, not only on yourself, but on other people. That's the way sin works. You, you don't even have to understand exactly how it's always going to work and play out like that. It's going to happen. Now, God warned them about the accursed thing. In Joshua chapter 6, and this is, I skipped over this last week, kind of, you know, partially on purpose because I, I knew we were going to cover it anyways uh, this week. Look at verse number 17 of chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6, verse 17, the Bible says, And the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein. So God is placing a curse on the whole city of Jericho. On Jericho, the people, everything in Jericho, there's a curse on that city, it says, to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she had the messengers that we sent. Verse 18. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed when ye take of the accursed thing, and make the camp of Israel accurse and trouble it. This was so important to God that he's saying, look, you need to stay away from this curse. They're cursed. They're going to be destroyed. We're going to burn this city to the ground. Everything that's in the city is going to be destroyed and wiped out. And I don't want you to touch it. I don't want you to take it. I definitely don't want you bringing it home with you. He says, you bring that little bit out. Anything of that accursed thing, not only are you going to do harm to yourself, I'm, it's going to bring a curse on, the whole, on all the children of Israel, on the whole camp. It's pretty serious. 